Welcome to Universal Marina on the Hamble, where we have got access to something a little bit special. Behind me here is a Levy Triana. Now this beautiful boat has just been restored by the skipper you see on board, James Enser. We'll meet him in a minute. But this is his rather beautiful 1968 Levy Triana, designed by the legendary Sonny Levy, Italian boat designer, but built here in the UK and freshly restored to this absolutely mint condition. So let's fire her up and take a look around. Now you can see a little bit of smoke here because this was originally would have been fitted with twin petrol engines, uh, but it has been re-engined a little while back with a single 180 horsepower Mercruiser VM diesel. Would have had twin petrols, but actually with this big single diesel, because it's more efficient through the water, it's actually a little bit quicker. So you should get speeds of up to around 27 knots. But it's not really about flat out speed. It's about how it runs through the water. And hopefully we'll get a chance to experience that. So let's jump on board and take a proper look. So James, this is your boat and you've done all the work on it. What first attracted you to a levee in the first place? Um, working on one. When I was an apprentice, I worked on one and thought it was the most beautiful boat I'd ever seen. And uh, after working on it, I managed to go for a sea trial on it and, it, and, it, and it, uh, it actually performed as well as it looked. So it's not just a style thing, it is genuinely How different it, to drive. The way it goes through the water, it, it's uh, such a deep V, a uh, very, very smooth ride, uh, very comfortable. Um, you have to try one really to, I can't explain it, it's so good. <laughs> And am I right in thinking that it was originally designed as a race boat, effectively, now? I think this one is moulded off a race boat. Right. These Trianas are moulded off the race boat. So, Sunny Levy originally designed it as a race boat for the Cow's Torquay or for... For the Cow's Torquay. Way back in... 64. This one's moulded... These are moulded off Poseidon, I think. Right. And, and there's a... I don't know all the history. I should know more. But this particular one, so when was this built? This one's... Um, 68. Right. Finished off in 68. So after years of hankering after one, having worked on one, you finally got the opportunity to buy your own one? Yes. And what kind of state was it in when you found it? Um, unloved. A little bit unloved, but, but usable, but unloved. Okay. And, uh, and, and um, just needed another refit, really. Sure. It, so it had had a refit already? It's had two refits in its lifetime. Built, obviously, it, Boat generally needs a refit every 10 years, and this one had a refit in '96, and another one in 2003. Right. And it's had another refit now, so so three refits in its life. Okay. And when you discovered it, it was on the river. So it was right. on the River Thames. So how many of these are still in existence, as far as I know? I think it's about 10. But don't quote me on that. But I think it's about 10 or so. And um, of, with the of the Triana with the curved screen, and there's another um, 10 or so, the Tropica with the square screen. So this particular curved screen we see here, this is unusual, this is an early boat. This is, it? is an early one. Right. And this is taken off the Christina. Okay. So um, Sonny Levy didn't know, um, he, he had to sort of compete with Christina's and Huntsman, so he made it look a little bit Christina <laughs> and Huntsman by putting a Christina screen on it. So how long did it take you to find the boat you were looking for? Well, about 20 years. <laughs> 20 years? Oh my I god. Well no, you, you know, I didn't you know, you always keep your ear to the ground, but I didn't yeah. actually get it. I always wanted one of these. Right. So, um, how long is it seriously looking? Um, probably seriously looking about two years. And it's not just a question of looking in the classifieds and bringing up, picking up the phone and saying, "Can I buy your boat?" Is it? No, I didn't. I didn't find it like that. But you know, someone else might. But I, I, I found it, it, it an interview process, and you had to get past the interview. <laughs> Because they're so rare that people want to know they're going to someone who will appreciate it. Yes, they want, it's all about custodians. We don't own these boats, we're just looking after them for someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So eventually, seemingly, you passed the interview process. Yeah. And then what happened? Because you obviously weren't wanted to bring it back to I got, even better condition. I wanted to bring it back to how it was, uh, to pour it, pour it, bring it back. And um, that, that took a lot of time and effort, but it is, I think it's here now. So what? What did it involve and how long did it take you? It took me three years of evenings and weekends. Three years? Of 
evenings and weekends and and probably six months solid work during the pandemic. Oh my god, so how many how many man hours do you think you spent on it? I, I think I spent about 3,000. 3,000 man hours? On, on this, yeah. So if you charge that out at a boatyard rate... It doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't make sense. Okay, so nothing about this boat makes sense and yet you it, love it. It's a levy. It's a Renato levy. So, right. you know, what can you say? Come and come and drive it, and you'll, and you'll see for yourself. I think it's um, I think it's the godfather of the deep V hull, and, and, and as such, he should be appreciated. Fair enough. You know. And what did this cost when it was new then? I think this cost five thousand four hundred pounds. Back in 1968. Back in 1968. That was a lot of money. A lot of money, and an Aston Martin DB6 was around four thousand four two. So it was more expensive than Aston Martin DB6. It was more expensive than DB6. These days. So. <laughs> but, but you know, may, maybe, maybe the Goodwood lot will start appreciating classic boats as much as they do classic cars. So, what do you think this is worth now in the condition we currently see it in? I don't, that's a hard question to answer, and one I don't want to answer. I think someone's got a certainly more than an Axo car. I would think. Fair enough. <laughs> so, what was actually involved in the refit? What have you done to bring it back to the condition we see her in now? Um, she's had a full um, top to, covered in um, epoxy primers and all grip paints and filling and fairing, uh, new, new rewired tin cabling, Lloyd spec, new skin fittings, new upholstery, um, what else do we have? Reinforced coach roof, all foam cord, all windows are out, new fittings, you've got some Davies and Company, they're very very helpful and um, horse controls and switch panels and and all as original as possible is it all from photographs really and uh, and and being a nerd with other people's boats <laughs> so things like these beautiful little toggle switches that's all that's all just from photographs and I'm trying to recreate it an original morse controls original morse control that i found on ebay lovely and here's this screen that means so much well, I think it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> and all these handrails, are these all original? These are original. Beautiful. Now James, for some reason, had trusted me to have a little go at the helm and try and understand what makes driving a levee quite so special. So we've just made our way up the Hamble River. We're now out in Southampton Water. We're totally long at four and a half knots and just over a thousand RPM. But let's see what happens when we put the throttle down. So this has just got the single diesel engine and not a huge amount of power. So it's not super quick off the mark, but there's plenty of torque in that engine. And already I can feel just how sensitive it is on the helm. So it's such a deep V, it's 26 degrees. So it's very, very sensitive. You know, the slightest turn on the wheel will have it rocking from side to side. And that's because that V is so deep that as soon as you move off the level, it will tip straight into the turn. But we've got a dredger passing here and we've got a wake coming up. So I'm just gonna line up, point it into the wake, just coming up to it now and now we're into the wake and it just rides straight through it it feels so solid and that deep V just slices straight through it there's no banging or slapping there's no commotion at all it just carves its way straight through it and look what happens when you put it into a turn Whoa, okay look at the lean on that that is just fabulous Honestly, I don't know if there are many better modern boats than this. I can lean over, I can, I can literally touch the water on that. That is something quite special. And to think that this was, well, originally designed back in 1964 and this was built in 1968, it just goes to show that hull design really hasn't changed that much. If you get a good one, it's just as good today as it was back in 1968. But you can see what all the fuss is about. I mean, it's just 
so sensitive. We're only got a quarter of a turn on the helm and look what it's doing. And it's really dry as well. Because you've got plenty of bow in front of you and that 26 degrees all the way along the hull. So it's not just at the transom or just up at the fore peak. It's a solid 26 degrees all the way. And we've got proper half inch thick, solid GRP. So it's not the lightest boat around. It's not as efficient as a modern boat with a variable V hull. But in terms of sea keeping, it really does live up to the legend. Let's put in one more turn here. I think we've got just about enough water. Oh my goodness. Look out the back, point the camera out the back. Look at that. Look how close that half course turn quarter is. That is quite something. People always talk about Sonny Levy hulls with a kind of hushed reverence. And sometimes you wonder, well, does it really live up to that? You know what? It really does. You can get faster boats, you can get more efficient boats, you can certainly get bigger, more expensive ones. But will you have more fun in them? I don't know. I think you can have as much fun in this as anything. To be fair, you could, probably could do with a little bit more power. You know, they, they do fit them with big V8s, petrols and even twins. And with that kind of power, it's capable of doing 45, even 50 knots. This one, more like 25, 26, maybe 27 on the flat. But it's still a huge amount of fun. It's, it's like you don't need a supercar to have a huge amount of fun. You just need a beautifully balanced chassis. And this is exactly the same. It's a beautiful deep V hull, really sensitive steering, loads of character. And that's gonna put a smile on your face every time. I mean, James is about four feet above me. I can see the water running past the hull here. And I can see what all the fuss is about. You could take this little 27 foot out boat out in a big sea and it would really look after you. 25. 25. Sorry, my mistake. I thought it was 27 foot, but it's not, it's only 25. Honestly, that is really deceptive because it behaves like a bigger boat. But for a 25 foot boat, that really is something special. I'm going to give the engine a little bit of a break. Bring it back down off the plane. But I think you can probably see from the smile on my face just what that means to me. To be able to get in an original levy design Triana and feel what it's all about. That is one of the bucket list ticks. So tell me what you've done to the boat, because that doesn't look like an ordinary 1968 Levy Triana. A couple of subtle changes. Um, I've painted the, I've glossed the coach roof rather than having a textured finish, filled and fared it. Um, painted the frames, blacked out the windows, filled and fared the top sides. Gold leaf on the cove line, real gold leaf. Actual gold leaf? Actual gold leaf. 24 karat gold leaf. 24 karat gold leaf. What? That's um, that's how it used to be done back in the day, isn't it? Everyone used to have gold Cavita lines. It's a gold Cavita line. Wow. And, um, and I've painted the deck white rather than the colour, which is um, probably not, not very practical, but I think it looks nice. <laughs> Let's go and take a little closer look to it, actually admire the work that's gone into that. So this is where your 3,000 hours went, is it? Yes. So hours and hours of just filling, fairing, sanding, longboarding, all those top sides. Yes, and spraying. And spraying. So it's absolutely perfectly smooth. And this is that 24 karat gold. That's right. So if I scratch it off with my fingers, you'd be a bit cross with me. That's no, fine, have to. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then this has been filled and fed. This had a texture finish on it on her. So I've made it a gloss coach roof, mainly to discourage people from standing on it. 
And what would it have been originally then? It would have been a texture finish like this, like this deck here. Yeah. So sort of non-slip, non treadmaster. Yeah, so I wanted to look. And then a non-slip finish here. But that, that was horrendous before. It was a horrendous Artex finish. Artex? Well, it looked like Artex. It was, it was gel coat rolled on with a fluffy roller. So it looked like an eight, 1980s um, Artex ceiling. So how did you get rid of that? With a grinder. Oh my God. And a sander. So again, hours and hours of dust and mess and toxic fumes. And... Yes. Wow. But it matters to you that much to get it well, it did. You wouldn't want an art. No one wants our text on their ceiling, do they? Fair enough. This, and what about these air inlets? Th these, are, these are painted a nice, a nice Aston Martin silver grey. Um, this is original uh, enamel badge because it was made, even though it's a levy design hull, she was actually made in pool. Um, this, is all, this is all as it was. Um, they actually took the windscreen off of Christina. Right. Um, and I think these are something like Huntsman things, which is why people get confused and say, is this a fairy Huntsman? Now, the other thing about a Triana is, even though it's 25 foot, it's actually got quite a useful little cabin down here. So if we come down inside and have a look. James, what have you done to lift the interior of this? So this was all covered in foam back vinyl and it was quite smelly. <laughs> And the, and the foam back vinyl was it had curtains here as well. So I've tinted the windows, got rid of the curtains, taken all the foam back vinyl off and f painted the whole boat inside with, with epoxy primer and filled it and dressed it and put it in a sort of eggshell, all two part paints, marine paints. And then the coach roof is a little bit flexible. So this was the nasty job. Um, I had to basically reinforce this and foam core all of this. Wow. Uh, and then over laminate it. So that was quite a nasty job. So it, originally it would have actually deliberately been flexible. As it, this boat was made, the hull was very thick and the superstructure was very light. So it's obviously for center of gravity. And as a result, the coach roof was flexible. Right. And with modern design technology and everything, you can make something stiff without adding weight now with, with core and stuff but you've got a little berth up front little berth up front is there an infill for that no there isn't an infill for that right just a proper old school v berth and this goes into a bunk as well the table lowers and there's a cushion that goes on too so you've got a little berth here as well wow so even though it's 25 feet you've got two berths effectively yeah or two double-ish berths <laughs> Double -double -ish. i think you can, you, can get, you can get three on here comfortably and four at a you know, cramped. <laughs> Very nice. And is that an old school compass? An old school compass? I got a car boot sale actually. It's, it's actually what was here originally. I f Henry wow. Brown. Henry Brown and Son. And when I bought it, I found the original screw holes actually ma married up. <laughs> no, so they were all equipped with that as standard. Henry Brown and Son. Ancestral compass. Fantastic. Still work? Still works. Superb. And then a little galley over here. Yeah. I, well, not not finished. <laughs> Right. I've taken the oven out um, and I've just put a cool box in there. So there would be an, a gimbaled oven there, would there? There would have been a gimbaled oven there. Yeah. I've got rid of the gas in the oven. Fair enough. I've just put a cool box there instead. And then even a heads compartment? It's all fairly presentable. Look at that. So that is pretty good going, isn't it? In a 25 foot boat with a proper deep V racing hull, you've actually got a remarkably decent amount of accommodation on it. And is that right that you're giving other people the opportunity to take a ride out on this boat? Yeah, that's right. This uh, M is now offered as a charter boat uh, with secret service charters. Um, you can go out for the day, the afternoon, evening um, and experience the levee. So is this a genuine business or is this just your excuse for trying to justify the amount of time and money you've spent this, on it? This is a genuine business and, I, and um, I wanted to do this from the outset with the restoration. Fantastic. Yeah. But it's given you a goal to aim for and a means of recouping some of the time and money you put into it. That's correct. So you've spent 3,000 hours and an amount of money. An extraordinary that... amount of money <laughs> and an extraordinary amount of time. <laughs> and has it been worth it? Yes, it has. Isn't it? We've had fun today, haven't we? It's been good, isn't it? We have had a lot of fun and I have to say it was a real privilege to drive it. Yeah. So thank you very much for 
showing us around your boat, for letting me get behind the helm, for trusting me to do an acceptable job on it. Uh, you did a brilliant job, no, thank you. And for, above all, for preserving a bit of boating history and making it a beautiful, usable boat. What a lovely thing. Thanks very much, James. Thank you.